As a preface, there is currently very little verified information on the S500. There isn't even any publicly released images of the system. The information contained here comes from data publicly released and inferences based on those facts, previous systems, and comparable systems. Russia, more than any other nation, has put enormous sums of money and research into surface-to-air missile systems. After facing massive-scale bombings at the hands of the Germans during World War II, and the threat from America's long-range bombers, Russia decided that they needed a system that can defend against these threats. They quickly designed and built several advanced systems for the time. This caught the US by surprise when their high-flying U-2 spy plane was shot down by an SA-2 over the Soviet Union. The US had thought that their U-2 flying at over 70,000 feet was untouchable. The SA-2 went on to become one of the most widely used surface-to-air missile systems in history, and is still used by several nations to this day. The next major technological advancement was the mobile, long-ranged S-300 deployed in the late 70s and early 80s. The system has seen several variants and upgrades over the years, until finally culminating with the S-400 surface-to-air missile system. The newest system Russia is developing is known as the S-500 Prometheus. Russian Air Force Commander Colonel General Alexander Zelin said that the S-500 air defense system is a system that will solve Russia's missile defense problems. The few drawings that are publicly available show the system to be somewhat similar to the S-300 and 400 systems, however with two much larger missile tubes instead of the four. While it will be able to defend against aircraft and cruise missiles, the S-500 is geared more toward defending against ballistic missiles, similar to the American THAAD. It has been stated that the system will be able to defend against ICBMs, however if it does have this ability it will be limited. That job will still fall to the A-135 and the successor, the A-235. The missile simply does not have the size and speed needed to intercept an ICBM outside of the atmosphere. It is claimed that the S-500 will be able to reach an altitude of nearly 200 kilometers, but at that height, the missile will have burned up all its energy and will not have the speed to maneuver to hit a warhead. By comparison, the much larger US ground-based interceptor has the ability to reach and intercept warheads at nearly 2,000 kilometers in altitude. It also appears to lack a dedicated exo-atmospheric kill vehicle as the GBI has. This is due to its smaller size. For these reasons, the S-500 will more likely be geared toward defending against medium and intermediate range ballistic missiles with limited ICBM defense, again very similar to THAAD. The S-500 will have some ability to shoot down large, high-flying aircraft, however it is not designed for this purpose. That task is more suited to the S-400, which it is expected to work with. It is stated to have a range of 600 kilometers compared to the S-400's 400 kilometers. Those ranges are the maximum range. It is worth noting that the actual effective range is much shorter. This is true for all surface-to-air missile systems. Movies and television have portrayed these missiles as burning their engines all the way up to the point where it hits a target, and also being able to miss a target, turn around, and re-engage. For example, this scene from the movie Behind Enemy Lines. This is not how they work in reality. Surface-to-air missiles typically only have enough fuel to burn their engines for a matter of seconds. This burn is to get the missile up to speed. This video here is from a game called DCS World, which I think can illustrate this better than my own animations. Once the missile runs out of fuel, the missile glides toward its target while gradually slowing down due to the friction of the atmosphere. An aircraft attempting to evade an incoming missile will typically dive to a much lower altitude, where the atmosphere is thicker, and change course, making the missile have to also change course, therefore bleeding off even more of the missile's speed. Of course, these modern long-range surface-to-air missiles are extremely deadly if the aircraft is too close. At that point, evading a missile with these techniques is virtually impossible. This is why surface-to-air missiles with higher speeds can be much more deadly, as it can afford to be more maneuverable before it loses its energy. The long-range S-400 missile and the S-500 are believed to have top speeds at several thousand miles per hour. Another primary purpose of the S-500 will be to defend against hypersonic cruise missiles. Currently, the US, Russia, and China are all working to develop hypersonic cruise missiles. The benefits of these weapons are evident. They are able to reach their target much quicker, therefore limiting the enemy's response time, and their speed make them much more difficult to intercept. The US, Russia, and China have also worked to create a defense against this new type of weapon. The US Navy's SM-6 and Russia's S-400 currently have some ability to intercept hypersonic missiles. The US is working on future systems like the possible THAAD-ER, the Russians with the S-500, 
and the Chinese are working on upgrading their HQ-9s, among others. The manufacturer of the system, Almaz Anti, is the same company responsible for the development of the S-300, S-400, and several other missile defense systems. For development and production of the S-500, they have built or upgraded at least two large factories in Russia. The S-500, like the S-400, has faced several delays. This is common when it comes to state-of-the-art military projects. It was announced in development in 2004 and was scheduled to be ready by the mid-2010s. This figure was delayed to 2016 and then 2017, and it appears that the system is still not yet operational to this day. The original plans call for 10 S-500 batteries to be operational by 2020. This figure has since been cut back to 5. Also, there are still not any publicly available images of the system, only models and drawings, like this image which appears to be from an Almaz Anti calendar. These facts likely indicate problems in developing the system, although again, this is not unusual. The US THAAD system was in development and testing for nearly 20 years before becoming operational. It is most likely that the S-500 will not become operational for at least another year, and even then, only in small numbers. This can be attributed to Russia's recent financial crisis, other delays, and the lack of urgency needed for an operational ballistic missile defense system. However, once completed, the S-500 will give Russia a major leap forward in its military's defense capabilities. As a side note, I just started a Discord server. It's a place to discuss war-related topics, current events, and any suggestions and comments for the Covert Cabal YouTube page. If you want to get a hold of me, that's the best place to do it. The link is in the description.